Now the valve. Now we're going to replace this old one. Because this old one kind of this had three springs in it. All right. And it has wear on a Delron. I could see. And you have to inspect where the quadrant actually or the main o-ring that seals the whole rod. It sits in one area. It's no more than a half quarter inch. It, if it's really worn or you shot this a lot, you'll see a little shiny spot where it's sliding in and sealing the rod. Make sure it's not damaged. It could be a little shiny, it's okay. What I do is get a this 1200 grit cloth. Just get all the loose stuff off of it. Because you want a clean and shiny surface where the quad ring or ring sits on. Have a nice ceiling surface. And that o-ring will last longer. Anyway, we're going to replace this to a newer one. Newer one has a one single o-ring, I mean <laughs> spring. All right, even though it's brand new, I still run a cloth through it. Oh, let me uh, show you one thing about old ones. This rod is threaded just like this, but a little longer, but it's threaded on this end. And this rod is threaded onto this piece here and Loctite it. Over time, but I've seen some that actually backed out. Uh, that's not good. When it backs out, that means your hammer seat in the, in the front here where the hammer hits is going to be further back. The hammer only travels so far forward. If the hammer seat is too far back, it's not going to open the valve fully. So make sure when you assemble everything, make sure it is tight, not backing out. All right. While it's, it was still new, I still in, inspect the new one. All right, you lightly lube your shaft, rod. Now, when you get a new one, you might not have the two by two by two by one O-ring. We're going to install that. Lightly lube it. You know, even though it's brand new, inspect the O-ring groove. All right. Slide it over. Now, even though it's new now, look at the edge of this Delron. We're actually mates. Run your fingernail through it and make sure you hear you don't feel any uh, bumps and gouges. If there is, I guarantee it's gonna leak. All right, you put the spring in there. All right. Now we're going to uh, get this valve housing and make sure this goes all the way in and you'll see the end of the rod. All right. So nothing is binding in and out is seating. All right. This is ready to go in the red tube. When you do this, you actually feel what the o actually mates with the rod, you feel the resistance. We'll keep it in this position. And there's only one way it goes in. One side is threaded and threads it in like this. And when you do this, it has to be hand tight. Nothing is binding. You don't want to force anything. It's telling you nothing is normal here. It's not normal to have put a vice grip on this and trying to turn it. You go hand tight for now. And this is kind of in there hand tight. Now I want to keep this because I'm going to slide in the rear block. 
And I don't want this rotating for now, so I'm gonna apply a little bit of tension on this clamp. Just like a four mil. Just slightly, till valve housing doesn't move. So while I'm sliding in this rear block, now you gotta inspect the rear block. Clean the old silicone was in front here. So you gotta inspect inside. Run a rag, wipes all the way through the bore. And inspect anything gouges. I've seen gouges here before. I mean, guys, or something, they just yank it out. You see the gadgets on there. Gouges, I think, is made by the the valve housing, the set screw mark. Here, if you have a raised lip here, it will gouge it up. And also, key point is gauge here. You only tighten it just enough to create a seal. Uh, you don't want to put a, a wrench on here and tighten the heck out of it. You know, those guys don't know their torque requirements or don't have a torque wrench and they don't know how much torque they apply in there, you will ruin this. Not the gauge. Because the bore has really light shoulder where the gauge sits on. If you over compress it, the piece of the metal will stick out of here inside the bore. Then your valve housing cannot slide in. It will jam. And actually, you have to replace the whole block here. Unless you're a good machinist and go down and bore it out. But then you weaken the sealing surface of the gauge. So don't over tighten this. Just enough. So, you know, you create a seal. Now we want to, I don't know. The lube kind of wore up holding this, so re-lube it. All right, slide in there gently. Well, let me use, I lube the bore. And lightly slide the o-ring in. See the speed I'm doing? Because you just shove it in as fast as you can, you're going to nick these guys. Usually you have advice to do this, but... There you go. Now we're going to align this valve housing. You got to remove the set screw here. I like to visually see what the actual screw is sitting on. You'll, you'll see it. If not, it won't rotate. Go, rotate the other way. So rate the hole. Then you see a transfer port hole. Then you see the actual seat for the set screw. Now you want to lightly it like that then you want to uh, move the housing side to side and find the actual center line of the set screw to the valve housing then fully tighten it not really tight it's just like that that's it all right now you're going to eyeball this you want to rotate it since it's locked you want to loosen this part this clamp here want to rotate it gently because you want to turn it clockwise. If you turn the other way, you want to unscrew off this uh, reg tube clockwise till this two block kind of eyeballed flush, I mean horizontally. Then you tighten it. Okay, for now, this piece is ready to be pressure tested after 
we reseal the regulator. 